We're going to begin this hour with an in-depth interview with one of this year's Kennedy Center honorees, singer, songwriter, that's Amy Grant. She really needs no introduction, but how's this for an impressive list of achievements? Grant's acclaimed career includes six Grammy Awards. She's sold more than 30 million albums. And her music has been streamed more than one billion, that's billion with a B, times around the world. You go, Amy Grant. Vlad well, met with her at her home in Nashville to talk about this latest honor. And this is her first broadcast interview since a serious bike accident over the summer. Vlad, good morning. Good to see you again. And I have to say, I'm a little jealous. I love her. It was an incredible sit-down interview, Gail. I had such a wonderful time in her home. And Amy Grant's incredible career includes top-selling albums across several genres. But the Kennedy Center Honors comes as she emerges from what she told me has been the quietest season of her whole life. A bad bike accident this summer knocked Grant unconscious for nearly 10 minutes forcing her to cancel a fall tour, and at times, struggle just to remember the lines for her songs and even the names of some of those closest to her. It started off just trying to remember names of people in my family. This is after this your This was post bike crack, yeah. These days, Amy Grant isn't taking anything for granted. A lot of sentences would start off, are they dead or alive? <laughs> the people that you're thinking about. Yes. <laughs> filling this book with her own memories after a bad bike crash. I don't remember the wreck. I don't remember the weeks right after that. It's the happiest season of all. And when Grant invited us in for a preview of her upcoming Christmas show, we she revealed she struggled at first just to remember some words to these classics. It's been a really slow season. I've been on a treadmill going about 0.5 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm like I'm merging onto interstate traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rest of the world, at 0.5 miles. Okay. <laughs> Somewhere down the road. That return is bringing Grant not just back to the stage, but one of the country's biggest spotlights. Kennedy Center Honors. Aretha Franklin's a Kennedy Center Honor. Paul McCartney's a Kennedy Center Honor. And now, Amy Grant. <laughs> In my mind, one of these things is not my <laughs> <thing. No. laughs> The multi-platinum artist never had to make it to Nashville. Grant grew up here. Were you a musical family? My parents loved music. But I think we all sort of took the perfunctory three to four years of piano from the lady down the street. <laughs> now we did sing in church. Mm -hmm. And we were one of those families that went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I cannot remember one sermon from one preacher, but I remember the music. And Grant remembers hearing those hymns made her think. Oh my gosh, these are like, whew. I think I just said, God, you could do with some good PR here. <laughs> <laughs> So at just 15, Grant reached her first mountaintop. I'd love to stay another mountaintop. Still so young, she's wearing her high school ring on the album cover. A guy that my sister had gone on a date with heard a copy of a cassette I'd made for my mom and dad. And they called the record company and played that tape over the phone. I, I read that. He, they played that over the phone. And he even said he's not that good. She's not that great. But Wait, she I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> said, I mean, she's okay. She's not that good, but she sounds sincere. And I was. Wow. And so, yeah, I feel like I grew up with my audience. And Grant's audience quickly grew. Soon, she had the first Christian record to go platinum. <laughs> take much time for her star to really shine. With early 90s crossover hits like Baby Baby, off her best-selling album, Heart in Motion. The song that some critics cast as too sexy for a Christian artist actually was written watching her own baby, Millie. But I didn't know it was about your daughter. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a great thing about a song. It can be about anything. And then you brought her out on stage at the 34th Grammy Awards when you were singing that song. 
This is such an adorable moment. Oh, come here, baby, baby. From a mothering standpoint, to have a two-year-old up that night. <laughs> that baby recently made Grant a grandmother. You see, baby? She's standing. <gasps> Her 2013 album, How Mercy Looks From Here, is dedicated to Grant's own mother, who died from dementia, and features collaboration with some of Grant's favorite musicians, including Carol King, James Taylor, and Vince Gill. and Gill wed in 2000. The couple's combined 28 Grammys crowd their home studio shelves. The most recent one for his tribute. Which Gill performed in August with their daughter, Karina. Listen how she changed the words. As they prayed for Grant's recovery from that bike accident. Man, like since 2020, I've just been flirting with death right and left. Three years ago, Grant accompanied Gil to a doctor's visit. And the cardiologist said, hey, let me check you out. And Vince was like, oh, she's an energizer bunny. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, I'm fine. And now I go, thank God, because I had a birth defect undetected, and he said I would have been dead by 62. Grant just celebrated that 62nd birthday. <laughs> the every heartbeat artist had open heart surgery and then that bad bike accident landed her back in the hospital the three things i kept saying over and over again i can't believe i have all my teeth something's wrong with my shoulder and i needed this wait what i know but i needed this Think about how, like, what energy do I have left, and how would I like to use it differently? And it's been such a gift. And really, the gift is I loved music before anybody was listening. I wrote songs because they helped me understand life. And, like, I woke up saying, I still have that same toolkit. And I think I have one more good record. kicks off a series of Christmas shows with her husband, Vince Gill, and she's hitting the road in spring to make up the tour that she was forced to cancel this fall. It was such an illuminating interview, and you know, she talked about music as, as a healing force, and I spoke to her uh, uh, about um, the song, I Will Remember You, you know that yeah. song? I, and I told yeah. her how, for me and millions of others, I thought it was a powerful song in the wake of 9-11 and helped a lot of people get through yeah. the trauma of yeah. that horrific day. And she didn't know. She didn't know that people were playing that song on repeat oh, in wow. the weeks and months and years after 9-11. Yeah, but I like so what true. you said, that music can make you feel different things depending on what's going on in your life. I also, I just, number one, I love her voice. Me too. I think she's so terrific. Yeah. And when she says, I was writing music when no one else was listening. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, because that's what it means to her. It was always inside of her, and she, um, by happenstance, somebody heard her perform and said, you've got to sign this young a singer songwriter to the label and that's how she began her career she was 15 16 years old yeah. she's been touring and, and writing ever since and of course i was in the house that she shares with her husband vince gill and you saw all those guitars i was yeah. in heaven and she said you know vince is touring with the eagles and she I was, was like say, man if he was, was here he would love to take you guitar shopping um, oh, oh man, man. He would love to heaven. all of his guitars yes. like, a prolific guitar collector it was really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, oh, well, thank you. You. oh yeah, with Vince. Money. Yes. I love, that. <laughs> I love that. She's great job, Vlad. And, and her job. journal. She's writing a journal to keep in her mind all the things okay. that we're talking about. Good for well, Read that too. Me forever. Thank you, Vlad. The Kennedy Center Honors will air this Wednesday, December 28th, right here on CBS and stream on Paramount Plus. All right, ahead, a new documentary takes us behind the scenes of some of the biggest moments.